Chuck, I got another explainer for you. Uh, oh, okay. this one, this one couldn't wait. Okay. And it's why things break when they fall. See, but this is, this is what I've learned yeah. from things you thought <laughs> you knew. There are times when in the past at full disclosure where you have said, so we're going to talk about Floating, things that float. And in my head, I will say, not audibly, of course, uh, <laughs> but I will say, Neil has lost his damn mind. <laughs> he wants to sit here and waste people time talking about why something might float. And I'm like, why, bro? Whatever. Let's, okay, let's get into it. And then we start talking about it, and by the time it's over, I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. So. Well, so here you go. Here we let's, go. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Why things break when they fall. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> maybe it's obvious to some people, but just I thought I would tease out the physics of what's going on. Okay? All right. Okay. So you have a plate that is up on a shelf. Okay. All right. It's a breakable plate. All right. And somebody shoves the plate. It falls. It hits the ground and breaks. It's a cat. A cat did that. A cat did that for sure. It's for, always a cat. For sure. Right. Okay. One of my favorite memes was it a meme where they said, "We know the Earth isn't flat because otherwise cats would have pushed everything off of it by now." <laughs> I, that I was, never saw that, but that that's was good. hilarious. That's a really good that's evidence good, yes. that Earth is not flat. All right, so the plate is in front of you. You actually have to commit some kind of violence on the plate to do it. Okay. okay? So what you have to do is ask, how much energy is holding this plate together? Okay. All right, so you go down to the molecular level and see how strongly the molecules are bound, are bound to each other. Mm. Okay? So in a crystal, for example, they're pretty strongly bound together. So if you try to break a crystal, it's hard. It takes more energy to right. break a crystal, all right? And so, but a fragile sort of dinner plate, all right? Not a plastic plate, but just one that can break. You actually have to put energy into it, and the plate will not break unless the energy you put into it is greater than the binding energy of the molecules holding the plate together. Okay. Okay. That, well, and that makes sense. That's simple. Doesn't that make sense? It yes. makes complete what, sense. What yeah, I but, what 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 doesn't make sense right now is yeah. binding energy. Okay, so <laughs> well, I thought those two words mean exactly what you think they mean in that sentence. So the two molecules that are adjacent to each other, mm -hmm. right? Now, why doesn't the plate just separate all by itself? All by itself. Yeah, something is holding the molecules together. Mm -hmm. Okay, it could be any one of a number of kinds of forces doing it, but nonetheless, they're attached to each other. And if you introduce energy that's greater than the energy that's holding it together, you will break that bond. Gotcha. Okay, so that's how anything breaks, basically. All right. But yeah, we're happy yeah. to use dinner plates for this example. Mm -hmm. All right. So if it's just sitting there in front of you, and if you pound on it, you'll break it. All right. So you had to put energy in it. But wait a minute, the plate that's sitting on a shelf that the cat pushed off, you're not pounding on it. You didn't pound on the plate. Mm -hmm. Nothing touched that plate, okay? Did the cat break the plate? No. The cat just showed the plate the edge of the shelf. And even if the cat broke the plate, you know cats. They'd have been like, I ain't break your plate. <laughs> I don't even know who you're looking at. Why are you even looking over here? First of all, why are you in my house right now? That's, That's what I'm trying to figure out. Who the hell are you? And why do you, like, why do you show up every day? How would you get a key? Is what I want to know. How did you get a key to this house? <laughs> well, can I get back to breaking plates, please? Anyway, anyway, okay. so the cat didn't do anything to the plate. The cat the didn't cat. physically the... break the plate. Right. Okay. So what broke the plate? This is the question. You know that if you take a hammer and hit it to a plate, it'll break. You know if you pound your fist on the plate, it'll break. You know all this, okay? Why did the plate break when it fell off the shelf? Because it hit the floor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
like, yes, yes, okay. Uh, okay. Um, it hit the floor with a certain amount of energy. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And the higher the location it falls from, the more energy it's going to have. Does that make sense? Uh, of course, yeah. And you know what kind of energy that is? Uh, energy of motion. So we have a word for that. Okay. Kinetic. Kinetic energy. Exactly. So the kinetic energy of the plate that it had the instant before it hit the floor, mm -hmm. you have to ask, how much energy is that compared to the binding energy of the plate? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. right and right, right. so does that exceed the binding energy of the plate? And if it does, the plate will break. Okay. Where did the plate get its kinetic energy from? Um, gravity. Gravity. Okay. Uh, all right. But gravity didn't put the plate on the shelf. Okay. Who put the plate on the shelf? Well, I mean, I mean, who who lives with the cat? <laughs> <laughs> That's who put the plate on the shelf. Yeah, because you know. <laughs> okay, so so the plate used to be at a low location, right? And somebody walked up to the plate after it was cleaned. It was like the lower shelf of the dishwasher. They picked it up, used their energy. Uh -huh. to give that plate what's called gravitational potential energy, okay? Mm -hmm. And the higher you put the plate on the shelf, the more gravitational potential energy it has. Uh -huh. And then the plate just sits there in possession of gravitational potential energy. It just sits there. And if you dare, if the cat pushes the plate off the shelf, the gravitational potential energy swaps and becomes kinetic energy. Right. Okay? Until it has no gravitational potential energy left, which is right when it hits the floor, and all that energy becomes kinetic. Mm -hmm. And this dance between kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy is what goes on in every curve and every turn of a roller coaster. Okay. Uh -huh. Other than the first pull up the top. Right. Okay. Where there's like chains and motors, everything else is free fall. Basically, you're in free glide. All right. And so that's why when you go up a hill, you slow down. Well, why are you slowing down? Because the gravitational potential energy is taking away your kinetic energy. And, and once you get to the top, why do you speed up on the way down? Because the kinetic energy is taking away, is, is, is being converted from the gravitational potential energy. And your fastest point on an entire roller coaster is going to be where? The fastest point? Yes. You mean where you reach your top speed? Yes. Where's that going to be? Uh, the bottom of the first drop. The bottom of it, the lowest point of the roller coaster right. is going to be your highest kinetic energy. And your, and your, and your, Highest potential energy is obvious now. It's going to be whatever is the highest point on the roller coaster. Right. So the roller coasters fully exploit this gravity, kinetic energy, potential energy relationship. Okay? And mm -hmm. all I'm saying is you want to know who broke the plate? You did because you gave it the energy to break in the first place by ascending it to that shelf. See, it sounds to me like you've been talking to the cat. <laughs> Because that's <laughs> something the cat would say. <laughs> I had nothing to do with this. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> whoever put, uh, put, I don't the, know. <laughs> whoever put it here, it's their fault. All right. I was just introducing you to some gravitational kinetic energy, okay? <laughs> Getting rid of some potential energy. And by the way, the broom is over there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's keep going. Okay. Now, suppose the plate fell from an even higher height. Okay. All right. It, it just doesn't break into two. What happens? Oh, it shatters. It shatters. It, unless there's some other sort of structural aspect of it, like like safety glass shatters rather than just breaks into large pieces. That You know why it's called safety glass? Because the pieces are, are so small that one piece can't go in and like cut your jugular, right? You'll just be like surface damage to your skin. Uh, with safety glass. That's why it breaks into very small pieces, like, instantly. It's, so it's, 
it, what? So it's death by a thousand shards. <laughs> instead of one. Instead that, of just that, one big one that cuts you in half. That put, put, pierces your aorta. All I'm saying is that if it's higher, it gains more kinetic energy because you gave it more gravitational potential energy. And by the time it hits the ground, it has much more energy to, bake the, to break the plate with. So it doesn't just break it in three places, it'll break it in a hundred places. There right. it is. Nice. So that's why things break when they fall. And Chuck, you know why some things just won't break when they fall? Because they're flexible. And the energy that would otherwise go back into the product to break its bonds goes into the product to have the product bend. Gotcha. That takes energy to do that. So plastic, something that's plastic, when it falls, it will just bend. And the energy goes into the bending of the, of the structure. So, and if you want to make something that, that, will, that will survive kids, things that fall and just bust apart into 20 pieces, but each piece can then be put back together the way it was before. You see? So the energy still destroys it but mm -hmm. doesn't break any individual piece because that energy just cast it, cast it asunder. That's why all my dishes are made out of Lego. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, that was brilliant. That's just brilliant. <laughs> I have to say, once again, I'm impressed. <laughs> I tell you right now, <laughs> uh, you know, I thought at the end of this talk that I was going to feel like the cat. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> wait, wait. So, and, and just to be clear, you could make something. If you wanted to say, I want to make a plate that doesn't break. Right. All right. So you make sure the binding energy between the molecules of the plate is greater than the energy that would that it would be given by the cat if it fell off a very high shelf in your home. And so it's basically unbreakable for most things that would happen in your home. And so you could, ca you could calculate what that energy is and find a material substance for which that's the case. So that's where you get break resistant. So I was going to say, yeah. So, so, oh, break I'd... resistant stemware for clumsy wine drinkers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so the, the material substance of it has higher resistance to, it requires more energy to break it than what is normal and typical for a delicate wine stem. I had a job where I had to uh, demonstrate something that was uh, <clears throat> billed as unbreakable at the time. Mm -hmm. And when you're, you were supposed to demonstrate it within reason, okay, I took it and slammed it down, and it exploded. And I then said to the people, uh, maybe it is break resistant. <laughs> <laughs> and that was your first and last day on that job, right? Oh, oh, oh without a doubt. Are you kidding me? All right, so Chuck, that was, that was another explainer. Listen, here's the one thing I know now. The earth is not flat. <laughs> That's <laughs> thank you. If that's all, okay, that's if that's your only takeaway, that's a start. It's a start. Uh, yet another explainer brought to you by Star Talk. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up. <laughs>